With the 2013 model year, the Corvette enters its ninth year, which is ancient in automotive terms. But with seven different models, all of them still remain incredible sports car values. And it's a true American automotive icon. We brought together the two fastest Corvettes ever, the Z06 and the ZR1. We're gonna take a look at what we love about the Corvette, what makes it so great, and also what it needs to do to remain relevant as it enters its seventh generation. I'm Mike Austin, technical editor for Car and Driver. We're at Chuck Walla Raceway in Desert Center, California to push the two flagship Corvettes to their limits. The Z06 model returned in 2006 with an all new seven liter engine making 505 horsepower. In 2006, 505 horsepower was a ton of power and it was the fastest Corvette ever at the time. It wasn't just the engine though, it also had an aluminum frame instead of steel, carbon fiber floor and fenders, a magnesium roof, and a dry sump oil system for better on-track performance. And then in 2009, the ZR1 debuted, the new ultimate, ultimate Corvette, making 638 horsepower. Again, amazing power for the price at the time, even though there are a lot more 600 horsepower cars today. It costs about $113,000, and there are a lot of cars at any price that don't perform like this. The ZR1 comes with even more carbon fiber than the Z06, with a carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber roof, carbon ceramic brakes. It has Michelin Cup tires that are basically race tires. It'll pull over a G in corners and a top speed of 205 miles an hour. Supercar is an overused word today, but it's absolutely appropriate to describe the ZR1 as a supercar. When the ZR1 came out, it had a new generation of magnetic shocks that adjust faster and stand up to heat better. And it's really one of the best parts of the entire Corvette lineup. It gives you that promise of sporty handling and comfortable ride. Another technology in the ZR1 that's trickled through the rest of the lineup is performance traction management, which is probably the most sophisticated traction control system anywhere on the market. It has five different modes from wet to race, and each one is progressively less aggressive. It gives you more control as a driver, but it still gives you the safety net. For everyone but the professional driver, race mode is gonna make you faster on the track. I mean, psychologically, you can drive a lot closer to you, your absolute limit and not have to worry about spinning or you know just completely screwing up the car. Launch control is one of the great features of the ZR1. With 638 horsepower, this is a really difficult car to launch, even for a good driver. What launch control lets you do is get the most out of the car over and over and over with consistent, repeatable performance. The ZR1 has always been kind of a showpiece. It's, it's the car you want for Woodward Avenue or any stoplight drag races. And yeah, it's quicker and faster than the Z06, but it's, it's just kind of a little bit of flaunting. Like, you know, you've got this clear lens on the hood that shows plastic in the top of the intercooler, which is really showing nothing. And it's a lot like wearing transparent pants. When you're packing this much power, you don't need transparent pants. People are gonna know. Personally, I prefer the Z06. It's a little bit lighter. The engine feels more responsive. Some of that's just the noise it makes, but it revs higher, and it seems like when you put your foot down, the throttle is a lot more immediate. The Z06 goes all the way up to 7,000 RPM, which, to someone who's familiar with small box, feels like about 2,000 RPM more than any small box should ever do. That's what makes the Z06 my favorite Corvette, because it just has this noise all the time and it makes you always want to floor it and then just let off really quick and hear that cackle coming from the exhaust. The Z06 is also a better value to me. Its it base price is $76,575, which is not really a number you really associate with value, but it's a lot less than the ZR1. The Z06 is really kind of a deal. It's not that much slower, it's still a blast to drive, Think of it in terms of a Porsche Boxster, which costs about the same and has all kinds of nice things about it. But on a performance level, the Co6 is in a completely different realm. The Co6 has almost every option box checked. It's got the ZR1 style uh, carbon body kit, 
has the carbon ceramic brakes, it has the magnetic ride with performance traction management. All told, it's like $24,000 worth of options, and $100,000 Z06 is a little iffy. Now, we're not expecting the next Corvette to be a radical design change, but we are expecting big improvements in the interior. The Corvette always gets benchmarked against cars like the Porsche Carrera and the Nissan GTR, which are way more expensive, but still, you can't help but making the comparison. And that's one place the Corvette has always fallen short, is some of that luxury feeling in the interior. It's always been a little more functional than stylish, kind of like cargo pants. We've been complaining about Corvette seats for years now, possibly because they're just really, really terrible. The foam is a weird, inconsistent softness, and this doesn't really come up when you're driving because you're pushing back in the seat, but check this out. Why should any seat do that? It's horrible. Another relic in the Corvette is the radio, whether the standard radio or the optional nav. In the nav, it has really grainy display, like hilariously bad designs to the buttons. You have to push up and down over and over to change the channel. There's no knob. It's just long overdue for an update. What are we going to see in the next Corvette? Um, well, don't get too excited. It's probably going to look about the same. Power is going to be about the same, most likely from a slightly smaller engine, maybe as low as 5.3 liters. There's a really good chance it's going to have direct injection and variable valve timing, and that's going to make fuel economy go up still gonna have a V8, still gonna have the engine up front, so don't get any crazy ideas. We've already seen the new head unit in the Chevy MyLink that's in the 2013 ZL1 and a lot of other models. There's a new heads-up display that's already in the Cadillac XTS and it just looks a lot better. Besides newer, better seats, we'll probably have a lot more room in the center tunnel, maybe even a little more storage in the center console. And just bring the Corvette in line with what you expect as America's best sports car. the next Corvette's going to come out at the Detroit Auto Show in January as a 2014 model and it'll be on sale mid-year or sometime in the fall. But that's just the base Corvette and as before they're going to sell that for a few years before they have the special models. Which means this is your last chance for now to get your hands on a Z06 or a ZR1. And in the case of the ZR1, maybe the last time ever. We're not even sure if it's going to come back. I'm Mike Austin from Car and Driver and I'm going to make the most of the time I have left in the ZR1 mostly doing really stupid stuff.